That's all the news I've got. Now it's your turn to help me. I need to know what's in that cathedral. I've got suits breathing down my neck for info. Suits? Specifically? Derek C. Simmons, National Security Advisor. Derek C. Simmons is one of the two main antagonists of the game, Resident Evil 6, and is arguably the more villainous of the two. Simmons is the National Security Advisor to the President of the United States, a position which he takes very seriously, as stability and security are the two things that he values above all else, to the point where, if that stability is threatened, he will take drastic measures to course-correct back on track. This desperation to have things go his way and stay the same has led Simmons to do some truly terrible things, such as kill the President of the United States and create a clone of a former associate, Ada Wong. Yes. Yes. This is it. She may have left me, but now I have her back. Happy birthday, Ada Wong. The story of Derek Simmons as we know it begins with his lineage. The Simmons family is a family that has a storied history of wealth and power, with one of Derek's ancestors founding the organization The Family before even the United States was established. This organization was dedicated to maintaining global stability but more importantly, dedicated to keeping its members, some of the most important people in the world, in those positions of power. In service to that goal, this organization would do whatever it took to ensure that the world moved in the direction that they intended, working behind the scenes to influence global events, manipulate governments, and even cause catastrophes should the need arise. And it was into this legacy that Derek C. Simmons was born. While we don't know much about Simmons' childhood, it seems likely that, from a young age, he lived a life of extravagance, perhaps even being groomed for his inevitable takeover of the family organization. Whatever the case may be, however, sometime before 1998, Simmons had managed to become a high-ranking government official, a position that allowed him to make the behind-the-scenes changes that the family was known for with perhaps his biggest contribution being his involvement in the Raccoon City incident. In 1998, with the zombie outbreak in a place known as Raccoon City, Derek Simmons was one of the main people pushing to raise the entire area to the ground. Simmons went to fellow upper-level government officials and urged them to destroy the city for the good of the country a request which they obliged with a missile strike known as Operation Bacillus Terminate. For the officials, this missile strike was a way to quell the spread of the virus. But for Simmons, it was a way to destroy evidence of the U.S. government's involvement with the biological weapons that were being developed by Umbrella. Raccoon City was destroyed. The outcome that Simmons wanted, he got. However, with its destruction came two huge setbacks. The first was a woman named Ada Wong. Ada had worked for Simmons on several missions before Raccoon City and had proven herself to be a very valuable asset. Intelligent, resourceful, beautiful, a perfect partner whom he cherished more than words could express. But with his raising of Raccoon City, Ada had left his employ, seeing it as dangerous to continue their working relationship. This loss shook Simmons to his very core, and he became desperate to return her to him in some capacity. The second issue were the secrets that now needed to be maintained. With the destruction of the city, the evidence of the US's involvement with Umbrella was now gone. The threat of foreign nations finding out about it made much less relevant. However, to maintain this lie required the cooperation of those who were in power or who would come into power, 
lest the United States lose its power in the global world order. With these two burdens weighing on him, Simmons carried forward as leader of the family, pulling strings behind the scenes to ensure that the world followed the path that they set for it. The loss of Ada still loomed heavily in his mind, but with no real way to get her back, his desire to do so simply became an obsession. Until one day, he met a young woman by the name of Carla Radamez. From a young age, Carla had shown an incredible talent in the field of genetics, graduating with a doctorate in the field at the mere age of 15. Simmons was impressed by her obvious talent and recruited her to work for him creating manufactured viruses and bioorganic weapons. Simmons would shower Carla with praise, and she in turn grew a deep devotion to the man who she viewed as a mentor, seeking his approval and pushing her research further and further to try and impress him. This relationship culminating in the creation of Carla's masterwork, which she called the C-Virus. With this virus, Carla could mold a person's DNA shaping it into something completely different from the host. Bringing this new discovery to Simmons, he immediately saw it as a way to get back his beloved Ada. He instructed Carla to begin testing with the virus to create an exact duplicate of Ada Wong, a mission which Carla would dedicate the next 10 years of her life toward. Carla went through thousands of test subjects, creating creatures such as the Lipotitsa and the Genezu, but never managing to recreate the woman that Simmons desired. And over time, Simmons became tired of waiting. Through other researchers working on Project Ada, he was made aware that Carla herself was actually the perfect subject to take place in these experiments. But obviously she wouldn't submit to them willingly, knowing the outcome. So, unbeknownst to Carla, he made preparations to run the test with her and tricked her into participating. And on April 30th, 2009, Carla Radamez was reborn as an exact clone of Ada Wong. Carla was reborn as a clone of Ada, an exact duplicate in terms of appearance. However, Carla's mind had been wiped clean, reduced to essentially a blank slate. And on that slate, Simmons worked hard to recreate the woman he was so infatuated with. He told Carla that she was the real Ada Wong, and treated her as if she was just that. Over the next few years, Simmons' life was going perfectly according to his plans. He finally had Ada back, and operations within the family were running smoothly. That is, until the president, Adam Benford, decided that, in the interest of helping to fight bioterrorism on a global scale, he was going to come clean about the United States' involvement in Raccoon City all those years ago. Simmons saw this decision as atrocious, and attempted to talk President Benford out of it telling him that it would only serve to destabilize the global power structure and undermine the United States' authority in the world. Benford, however, wouldn't hear any of it, and with the support of people like Leon Kennedy, he decided to relay this information during a press conference at Ivy University. Simmons couldn't let that happen. He needed to find a way to stop the president, so he devised a plan. He would kill the president, kill him in a way that mirrored Raccoon City so that the whole world would know just how tough the United States was on bioterrorism. He would have Lipotitsa, a creature that had the ability to turn others into zombies, placed all around the city of Tall Oaks, where Ivy University was located. Once they emerged from their cocoons, they would infect the population and even the president, turning them all into the walking dead. However, in order for this plan to work, he would need the president to be vulnerable. So he kidnapped a woman named Deborah Harper, sister of Helena Harper, and used her to threaten Helena into complying with his demands. Helena would use her position as a member of the Secret Service and warn them of a group that was on campus with the intentions of killing the president. This lie would cause the Secret Service to search the campus, leaving the president's defenses vulnerable. And in June of 2013, these plans came to fruition. With the 
the death of the president, Simmons ordered the city of Tall Oaks to be raised just as he had with Raccoon all those years ago. However, his victory was short-lived when he got a call from the real Ada Wong, who informed him that the clone that he'd created had gone rogue and had been planning his downfall for years. Simmons was caught off guard by this revelation. Carla had been working in secret for all of this time, planning his demise. And so he rushed to China to confront his failed experiment. As he made his way to China, he got yet another surprise. This time by a girl named Sherry Birkin, an agent that Simmons had sent in to investigate a lead on a man with antibodies for the C-Virus. Simmons was technically Sherry's legal guardian a role that he'd taken on after she escaped from Raccoon City those many years ago. Simmons found out that Sherry had found her target from the mission she'd been sent on six months ago and that she was in China as well. So Simmons set up a rendezvous for them to meet in the city. Once they arrived at the meeting spot, however, Sherry found out that Simmons wasn't the man that she thought he was. Disobeying his orders, she fled with the target, Jake Muller, while Leon S. Kennedy and Helena Harper kept Simmons' men occupied. Further misfortune befell Simmons as a lone Juavo carrying an enhanced version of the C-Virus found and injected him on the orders of his beloved Ada clone. She got me. This version of the C-Virus had been painstakingly created by Carla Radamez for her retribution on the man who had taken away her future. This enhanced C-Virus would continually mutate its host without the need for them to become a chrysalid, the goal being to fully remove stability from Simmons' life, to plunge Simmons' world into absolute chaos. To this end, the virus was very effective, and through it, Simmons suffered. Not only did the enhanced virus continually mutate his body, but when he called out for aid from his own organization, they resigned him to his fate. And so, angry, alone, having been betrayed by everyone in his life, Simmons faced the overwhelming cruelty of absolute chaos. You're all ours. Are you here to avenge the president? Is that it? Had he disclosed the truth behind Raccoon City, the U.S. would have lost all its authority, and the global political order would have collapsed. So to avoid one possible disaster, you create another? No matter how many people die? He had to be stopped! He was leading my country and this world into complete chaos. Ah. That woman... Uh, how dare she do this to me? Ah! Oh! 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 Oh!